I'm Shayan Zadeh, I'm co-CEO at Zeus. Zeus was born out of a completely different company that was not even online dating. So uh, Alex, my co-founder and myself, started a company that was supposed to be a market research tool through social media. And this was early 2007, we built a product, uh, we released it to market, and one of the, we were using a couple of promotional vehicles to really get adoption for that original idea, an original product, and one of them had some kind of a dating connotation, and we released it on the Facebook platform in the early days of platform in 2007. Uh, that took off like crazy. Uh, for months, we still treated it like a side project, even though it was growing like a couple orders of magnitude faster than the original idea. We were still married to the original idea. But eventually we realized, oh, there's so much demand in this market. Uh, this thing is cool, but this other thing is just exploding. Uh, so we put the brakes on, regrouped, relaunched that product, which came out as Zeus in December of 2007. The original thing, it was market research product that existed both on the web and on Facebook platform. But those promotional vehicles that we had, the fun side projects, they were mostly Facebook applications. And one of them eventually turned to become uh, what Zeus came to be. <laughs> the name Zeus. Uh, we had a couple of ideas. Uh, Alex had this idea that uh, web companies with two O's in their names are statistically more successful. Think about Google, Facebook, Yahoo. You just uh, you can call it superstition. You can call it scientific analysis. Uh, we also wanted to have uh, to start with uh, Z or S because they're just sexy letters and to be memorable. So it needed to be short. Uh, we knew the product is going to be a global product, so we wanted it to not mean anything in any language, be a clean slate for us, all the domains be available, no trademark issues. So that took us about two months of just brainstorming, brainstorming, brainstorming. And eventually, the day that came, we came up with the name, both of us were sick. We had about a full bottle of NyQuil around <laughs> in. We were just sitting around trying to throw names out and come up with something that works. And we'll just throw a name, do GoDaddy searches and the trademark and the domain and stuff like that. Uh, and eventually we got onto Zeus. Wow. All right, so what's this? That is some of the couples that have met on Zeus. They, uh, they send us our pictures and we put them up in our reception to. And then you chose these three quotes for the wall? Yep, there's, uh, with the pictures come quotes, and um, we chose these because they're some of the more fun and Zeuskified ones. What are we, 98 now? And that's all here in the San Francisco San Francisco Does Zeus only do this one product, or you now, you, you what, what about all those other products? Are they dead and gone? I mean, what else? No, we're always, we're always playing with ideas and seeing, uh, one of the ways that we, we think about the company is that we have we are a technology company and it's applying uh, know-how that we have to the dating industry and uh, but you can argue that same technology that same IP that same know-how that same skill set in the team can be applied to different industries and we're always experimenting with things uh, just tinkering along our engineering team builds products on the side an example of it is uh, you guys might have heard about it social boxes of chat experience that we rolled out, for example, for Facebook platform. It has nothing to do with Zeus. It was a side project of one of our engineers. I uh, did it in a couple of weeks, and we just threw it out and grew it to millions of users in a short span of time. Uh, we don't know where it's going to go. We're playing with it. We're experimenting. Yeah. But uh, it, it helps us in two ways. One, it might lead us to opportunities to make this company even bigger beyond focusing on just dating. But it also helps our engineers to play with new technologies, get their, get their hands dirty with things that are not the day-to-day -day that they're doing so they can really keep a wider variety of skills under their belt and you never know which one is going to come handy at some point. So um, it helps us in both ways and we have lots of different small products that we're playing with. But Zeus is the primary uh, product of this, this company, the primary service. And how many members do you have now? Uh, last publicly announced number is 50 million, but that was a couple of years ago, and we're not disclosing that anymore. I mean, there are public data that you can look at, obviously. You can look at Quantcast or Comscore or Compete or however you want to look at it. One of the interesting things about our uh, product lines is that it's not just a web destination site. So we have a very active uh, Facebook application. We have active social network applications on places like High Five, Tagged. 
uh, Kipasa MySpace. Uh, we also have a very fast growing and active mobile experience, native clients on iPhone and Android. Uh, we have a downloadable messenger client. So it's very hard for outside measurements to capture the, the whole ecosystem, but at least it gives an Apple and Apple comparison in terms of the website itself. Let's say you just want to compare Zeus.com to another destination. The way we think about Zeus is uh, Zeus is a utility, it's a service. And we can bring it to you on Zeus.com, we can bring it to you on Facebook, we can bring it to you on Android device. God knows, sometime in the future, maybe bring it to your TV. We don't care where it is, right? But the same business model and the same uh, idea and application applies to all of these different incarnations of the service. So, like you said, freemium on Facebook, the same freemium model on Zeus.com. And actually, when you sign up for an account on either one, you get everything uh, without any more work. So seamlessly, the user gets the experience across all of these platforms. It's a combination of things. I think the most important piece of it is the product offering. We really feel that uh, the product that we have out there is really superior to a lot of the competitive products uh, in the marketplace, either from newer generation dating products or even older generation people that have been around for a decade or so. Our brand seems to resonate a lot more for the broader audience. So traditionally online dating was 40 plus year olds were engaged with it uh, and that has been a challenge for a lot of the companies to break into a younger audience which is actually has more singles that are, have longer dating lives. And the positioning of Zeus and our distribution and the product offering itself has really helped us to broaden that, that appeal. So we're not just focused on the 30 million people in the U.S. that are single and are on internet and above 35 years old. We've actually expanded it to over 70 million in the U.S. in terms of addressable market. Uh, so the combination of all of these and just the fast growth that the company has had is just intertwined together. So this is the marketing team. Yeah. Hi, how you doing? That's Marcus. There's display ads. And this each of the flags here means where they're marketing to now. This is this is the different regions of that they're marketing in. Um, little bit, but some of these folks are just representing their country. So Remain is French, but he runs it for most of the world, I think. And that guy's famous. So this is your international marketing? Yeah. Okay. Julian, who do we usually sit here, is French, but... Uh, uh, it's a long list of countries. Uh, or the top, the top five countries that you're strong. I, I think U.S. obviously is, is a very uh, big market for us. Uh, UK, Canada, France, Denmark, Australia, South Africa, Germany, Italy, Spain, all of these are very strong countries for us. Uh, like I said, above 70 countries that we are active in, I would say 25 of those are very, very, doing very, very well. Some of them we are still uh, increasing our user base so that we're getting to a critical mass in them. And there are countries like uh, China or uh, Japan that we haven't really tackled yet, so those are the next wave of investments for us over the next couple of years. I mean, with, with some of the other countries, especially with two O's in them, they have problems with China. Um, do you see anything potentially that could be a problem there um, for you? I mean, it is definitely clearly... challenging, uh, and that's one of the reasons we haven't tackled it, because we have so much hang so low-hanging fruit out there in the world that we can really go in. Uh, very much easier to get traction in a lot of these markets, but at the same time, there's a huge number of online consumers. Uh, it's a very young country. Uh, there are a lot of single people. Uh, so, and a lot of them are coming online more and more, especially with mobile devices. So it's a huge opportunity, but a very challenging one, as you mentioned. A lot of American companies specifically have failed to, to make it work there. One pattern that we have seen that has worked the best is finding a local entity and doing a joint venture with, again, it has its own complications. Uh, so China, is, if you're interested in China, we haven't figured out exactly how we're going to go about it yet. This is the prop from the famous Zeus commercial. Was this the first Zeus commercial? It was the third Zeus commercial. It's one of the props from one of our YouTube videos. This one was to explain how the Zeus scientific matching service works. We have a 5.3 million likes on Facebook, so we're constantly creating new content. And a lot okay. of this stuff uh, just gets left around because it's fun. It's our social media manager that does a lot of the construction paper and creative stuff that you see in those videos, so she did that one.
It is. Facebook Connect is definitely an option uh, for signups uh, on Zeus.com. Uh, you also can sign up uh, directly using your email address and creating your password credentials on Zeus.com. Uh, on uh, different social networks, there are other mechanisms that you can sign up. So, for example, if you are uh, still using MySpace, for example, you can use the MySpace platform and sign up with your MySpace credentials. If you are uh, a user of uh, Kepasa or Tagged or Yonja or HiFi or Bebo, each of these has its own integration points. And the beauty of the system is that you've been able to build this platform agnostic ecosystem. And it doesn't matter where your credentials are and how you're entering the system. We consolidate it all together, and if you migrate at some point from MySpace to Facebook, you connect those two accounts together, and you don't even know that these things are completely separate under the hood. We have a syndication product. It allows us to offer a co-branded dating experience uh, on third-party websites. Uh, we have uh, relationships with places like Kepasa, as you mentioned, with Tag.com, with Yonja in Turkey and other publishers like that. And these are people who want a new way of monetizing their audience. So they have lots of traffic, they're using advertising predominantly for monetization, and they want to augment that monetization stream. So we provide this uh, co-branded personal experience that lives inside their property. They don't, it's not a lead gen that they throw them to Zeus.com. It actually lives inside their property. And that way they can continue to keep their users engaged but also provide a service that it would otherwise be very expensive for them to build from ground up, uh, a dating experience, because it's not their core competency. So they give us that piece of the business and we do a rev share on the back end with them. We, we coined the social dating term actually, like in early 2000, 2007, 2008. But now it has been used in a variety of different contexts and it's actually, it means different things to different people. Uh, some people think, oh, I have an application on a social network, so I'm providing a social dating experience. Uh, that's, I think, the simplified version of it. And that's really where we started from in, early 2000, in late 2007. Uh, but now the way we think about it is that, and this is something that a lot of people have alluded to, is social is coming into a variety of different verticals. Uh, it's coming into commerce, it's coming into travel, it's coming into gaming, it's coming into dating. And how does it's coming to recruiting and jobs with LinkedIn? So, how do you take that concept that uh, you have a highly interactive, uh, engaging property plus some sort of social graph? And to me, that that defines a social experience. So, let me give you a couple of examples. Right, Facebook is a social network. What's the purpose of Facebook? To keep up with your existing friends. That's really the primary focus of the property. And they, they've actually taken away things that goes against that. Uh, early days of, of the company, a lot of people were telling us, well, Facebook is going to do this and do that, and it's going to be a dating platform. In reality, they actually remove the ways that you can actually go and search for other people. That, that's not their, their purpose. And the social graph that you're building on Facebook is about people you know in the offline world, right? Then you have a different type of social graph on places like LinkedIn. This is something that we call a purposeful social graph. On LinkedIn, you don't add your uncle and your mom and your high school friend. You add people that you have, you're doing business with. Uh, and the purpose is not to share photos from the party over the weekend. The purpose is that I'm doing career advancement, I'm doing biz dev. So very different objective, different group of people, but still you're building this social graph, this relationship between individuals. And we have taken at Zeus that to online dating in the sense that I think we are the only company that allows you to build a social graph with the purpose of dating. So I'm, I'm a guy in San Francisco, I'm interested in women, I'm about 30 years old, so I'm looking at girls between 25, 35, let's assume, right? On Zeus, my social graph is girls that fit that criteria, that I meet on the site and I engage with them and gradually have conversations. Some of them go deep and I eventually go on a physical date with. Some of them are just we chatted on the web a little bit and on the messenger and just flirting and didn't go anywhere, the chemistry just fizzled out. But I'm still building the social graph that changes the dynamic of the experience. So instead of a bulletin board like Match.com where you post a profile, a very static concept, you have low engagement, I apply to your profile uh, and that's where it stands to where on Zeus you actually built a community around yourself. And I think LinkedIn is a very good parallel for this. 
compare LinkedIn to Monster. I think it's the exact parallel to Zeus to Match.com, uh, where Monster is just like Match, a bulletin board, pay for play. I set up a profile, my resume there, or I set up a job as a, as a company. And people apply to me and the transaction happens. And once the transaction occurs, whether it's successful or not, there's no history of it. It just vanishes, right? Versus on LinkedIn, you get testimonials, you build this network of people that maybe today they don't have a job for you, but in three months something opens up. Exact same concept is applying at Zeus, where you're building this social graph for yourself. And maybe you go on a date with somebody and you start dating them and you don't use the product for a couple of months, but when you come back, there is that history. You still have that network. You can re-engage those people if they're still on the service. And that changes the game significantly. And I think going back to your question of what do we see the relationship between social networking and online dating, I think it's not a competitive relationship. It's taking those concepts that the social experience and infusing it with the the objective that dating sites are providing, right? We're helping you to meet new people, to establish new relationships, hopefully find somebody that you fall in love with and have a very healthy relationship with. In, but you can enhance that process by bringing social into it. Bringing social into it doesn't mean slapping it on the Facebook application and uh, saying, okay, just do the, do the same thing that 15 years ago was available, right? I think we have taken it a little bit deeper and now we are seeing the fruits of that by much higher engagement among our users. The freemium model plays very nicely into this and being able to go beyond Facebook. Yes, we started from Facebook, but today Facebook is a very small piece of our business and that's because we have not defined social dating as, like I said, just slap it on a Facebook application and be done with it, uh, which is an approach that you see even a lot of the Older players taking like Match.com recently have launched like four different uh, Facebook applications. All they're doing is they're squeezing Match.com into an iframe on Facebook. That's not going to stick. You need to really rethink your product and say, what does it mean to make this product social? Because consumers in 2010, 11 expect it. It's not even a, an optional thing and nice to have anymore. Amazon is doing social stuff on commerce, on travel, on jobs, dating, all of the industries are just being transformed because this concept of these human relationships enhancing this experience applies everywhere. And, uh, that's one of the interesting things about Zusk is, uh, just to give you an idea of the scope of uh, the product offering out there, we are in 25 languages in over 70 countries. Uh, so that means variety of currencies, variety of payment methods, all localized different markets. And our approach so far has been to build a, a very robust in-house platform that allows us to basically pick and choose which payment methods available where, in which currency, at what price points, and which is provided by whatever provider. So interchangeably, we can go with payment provider A, payment provider B, be able to have them both at the same time, so all of that is abstracted out, and our platform says, okay, country, Germany, you want to have Giro pay, so forth, you want to have direct debit and credit cards. You go to Turkey, it's more mobile payments, credit cards, or some sort of bank transfer. So it really runs the gamut and depends on the particular market that we are in. So this is engineering. This is this engineering. And all your stuff is in-house? So you outsource anything, or what? Um, engineering it is all right in front of you now. Oh. And some of these are mobile engineers, some of these are... Now your servers are here in this building or they're... they're no, we have there? data centers. And and you use, use cloud-based hosting or you use what? Uh, we use a combination. We use cloud and also our own uh, data centers. Uh, there are, if, if you think about the Zeus offering, uh, we have two parallel offerings under one umbrella. Uh, one is the search and browse experience, and one is our matchmaking experience. And uh, the matchmaking, the engine behind it, there's a lot of IP there for us that uh, tries to look at, we're taking a completely different approach to matchmaking. We're not doing it the eHarmony way or chemistry way that fill out a questionnaire two hours, three hours, uh, and then we'll identify your soulmate by a computer. That, that we don't believe in that. We, we don't go that angle. But it's a great marketing angle for, for a lot of these companies. Uh, the approach we have taken is uh, let's look at, you do a lot of things on the Zeus property. 
Uh, we have a lot of data around who you engage with, who do you look at, who approaches you and you don't like them, uh, what type of searches you run. Let's combine that information with providing you a match on a regular basis and getting your feedback. So it's a guided search algorithm. Uh, it walks you through, uh, instead of really saying, okay, we are gonna identify that one person in the world for you, our objective is to hone in an area that the more and more of the people that we show you are actually people you would wanna talk to. Uh, and that's, that has been our approach, and there's a lot of work that goes into enabling that amount of big data movement around from your uh, activities on the site. Uh, augmenting it with heuristics that we have built over time, uh, identifying what works and what doesn't work, and just combining these together with the feedback we get from the users to give them better and better matches over time. Uh, there's a lot of other stuff on the search and browse side. Who do we show you? How do we rank people? Uh, but just the objective is to maximize your, your response rate. So to show you people that are really going to be engaging with you and you're going to be wanting to engage with them and that's the purpose of all the algorithms that we have behind the scenes. So I'm noticing a common pattern here um, between you, Speed Date, my firm, other companies, Post-it notes. I think engineers all over the world post use uh, Post-it notes. Post-it notes is the, is the way to go, okay. So I've worked in aerospace before and got it. Post-it notes there, so. And this is generally a huge, giant task wall for your engineers. This is where the brainstorming happens. I think engineers rely on whiteboards to be nearby at all times. And now the, that's what, like your, that's your NASDAQ. That's telling you how the servers are doing. What, one of the things that you're, we always want to make it fun for for people that join the company. And we had this contest going uh, for a, for about two months. I think it's going to end end of September. And the idea is that if you get hired for engineering at Zeus you'll actually uh, also will get a fully expense paid date in Los Angeles with the, one of the lead stars of our commercials. If you want a job and you want a date to go along with it, come on at Zeus and go to zeus.com slash careers. Your ideal engineer knows what? PHP, MySQL, I mean, what, what's there? The technology itself is not as important as understanding fundamentals of computer science. So if you, if you have been trained in computer science, you can solve analytical problems and you have used one or two languages in your lifetime, we, we know that you, you can learn new languages very quickly. What we look for is, can you break down problems, can you think about them analytically, can you solve, find algorithms to, to as, as a solution for a complicated problem, can you use technology to solve problems, really it comes down to that. And, which type of tool you're using, whether it's PHP, Ruby, Java, doesn't matter. If it's not the tool that you're going to use here, you'll learn it in two weeks. You're not worried about that. So for your hiring your engineers, they have particularly set hours or, or what? I mean, most of your engineers have set hours, like 9 to 5, or is it like, you know, just, hey, fix the problem? It's something more about fix the problem. Okay. So this is, this is game this room. This is game room where some of our staff go to chill out and refresh and play some foosball. Ping pong seems to be more popular. Usually after one of the big meetings for marketing or engineering, there's folks blowing off some steam with some ping pong. Okay. Plus we have a lot of international uh, folks here and uh, ping pong is popular everywhere. So from the engineers, from the engineers desks, this is their view? Yeah, you can see the, window. the Transamerica Pyramid right next to us. I know when you... Coit Tower. Um, in the distance. Then they try to reuse it. And the gossip Generally, uh, I think one of the finest views in San Francisco. Well, we can just Clearly, we very much value our engineers. Okay, so let me get this straight. This is not a lunch menu, this is a dinner menu. Yep, dinner is served at 6.30 for uh, some of the engineers that um, stay working late, some of the customer service folks as well. Uh, I'm more of an engineer. So who's your desk? Okay, all right. <laughs> Where's Alex work? Is he here? Or? He's literally would sit right next to you here. Yes. Okay, and then the rest of the office is, or a good portion of it's down here. Yeah, let's say there's marketing, engineering. So, oh, okay. So you're you're sitting at a point at the edge of a point where you got marketing on one side, and engineering on the other. I think iPhone was was the beginning of that, and. Uh, we really jumped on it in 2009, and in early 2010, it just exploded for us. And it's 
growing very rapidly. We followed the iOS application with the Android application very quickly on its heels, and that is accelerating you know, a little bit faster than iOS. Uh, and what we are seeing is that our users are actually uh, roaming across these properties. So they use it on Zeus.com when they're at home, and they use it on their iPhone when they're on the go. It's the same user that crosses these boundaries. And the beauty of having these variety of different product lines is that we can really cater to the occasion that the user is in. If they're already on Facebook, they can use the product on Facebook. If they have downloaded our Messenger client on their desktop and they're at home, they can easily engage with that. If they're on the go, they can easily engage with mobile. But you're seeing more and more time spent in mobile is increasing. And one in, another interesting thing that's happening is the definition of a mobile device is changing because now you have tablets. Uh, almost every device you get today is connected somehow to the web, right? So does mobile mean that it fits in the palm of my hand or is it that it's a device that's on the go? And I think the whole web industry is evolving around this, and dating is no exception. It's more so because it's such a personal thing that people are doing. So you're seeing this shift across the board that I want to be able to access your product from wherever I am. I, I am not going to go to where you want me to go to. I want you to come to me as a consumer. And uh, mobile is a big part of that story for us. Yeah, this is some of our back office uh, finance, HR. They all live in this part of the office. Okay. This is a massive customer service area where you can see it's a quiet zone because people are talking to our customers right now. So the flags mean what? The flags represent the international folks that speak the language represented by the flag and they deal with some of our international customers. Uh, I think everybody at Zeus speaks at least two languages. I think as an industry we need to become uh, more appealing to a broader demographic. I think that's the first problem with dating traditionally is every single company has been pigeonholed in 40 plus age range. You look at the average ages on free sites, paid sites, old sites, new sites, on the money is 40. And like I said, we are very excited because for the first time we have been able to talk to the younger audience and engage with them. And that there's a lot of growth. There's an untapped area. Nobody has really broken through there for the longest time. And to us, that's a, that's a just huge area of growth. Combine that with going international around the globe. Uh, traditionally, online dating has been market leader in Region A, has been there for years, very successful, tough time going to Region B. Uh, again, for the very first time, we've been able to break through that with, with new distribution mechanisms and the approach that we have taken to building a global platform from ground up. Uh, so being able to have an offering in Argentina and France and US and Australia and South Africa all from one platform that services all of these properties uh, is going to be something you're going to see more and more. You can't have a company anymore on the web that is going to service region A and is not going not gonna to break through and be successful. It's just everything is becoming so much more global and homogenized. Uh, and those are two big dimensions in terms of like macro trends. And then on top of that, you have movements from uh, just the browser, just the destination site to a variety of different devices, mobile devices, uh, who knows, and TVs someday uh, that the consumers are forcing it because they want to consume the, the data and the service in different formats. So all of these macro trends are affecting every single industry on the web and dating is obviously one of those. Yeah, we're not talking about teens. I, I think when, uh, for online dating, I, I think you're talking about 22, 23 plus. Uh, I don't buy the argument that they're a fickle crowd. I mean, you've seen them how sticky they are in a variety of different services. Ours is a good example of it. Uh, if you look at our demographics, we are the inverse of Match.com in terms of age demographics. Uh, they're much older than us. We're much younger. Uh, we're still making it work financially, uh, very successful in terms of conversions very successful in terms of stickiness, keeping them engaged for longer times. I think the problem hasn't been that that audience is not, doesn't need online dating or is not going to use it or is not going to pay for it. I think the offerings haven't been at the quality that this audience that has alternatives is not going to look somewhere else. Uh, the product plays the biggest role and uh, for better or worse, the products in online dating have been not 
there to, to really satisfy that audience. It's not just the feature set, it's the business model that you're layering on top of it. It's the positioning of the product. You can't go to a 26 year old and say, I'm gonna guarantee you to get married in six months, come use this product. It's just, it's not gonna resonate with that audience, right? So how you're positioning your product, what are you selling, what are you offering, and how is your product built and distributed has a lot to do with who is gonna look at it. And uh, I think as an industry, if you want to grow to into this much bigger demographic, I mean, in the U.S., the statistics are very clear. I mean, you've got singles that are active on the web. Above 35, everybody above 35 is total 30 million. 18 to 35 is 45 million. So more than doubling your addressable market by building something that resonates with both sides of the fence. And I don't think it's some either or. You can actually play the whole field in. That's what we're trying to do, and I think the industry is going to go that way. So your your opinion then, if you were the CEO of Match, that the purchase of OKCupid was was a good buy or no? Uh, they they got a good team. Uh, hopefully, they can keep them uh, on on the product and keep them engaged and give them the rain to make the product better. I think it would serve everybody if Match.com became a better product and was more appealing to to the younger audience as well. This just opens the industry to it. To a larger audience but so far the execution and uh, what we are doing in this space is just in our opinion uh, it's a self sort of opinion but we think we are really head and shoulder above the, the crowd there so uh, and we're taking advantage of nobody else playing in that field yes. you have any plans to have other offices elsewhere or? nothing short term no are you looking at acquiring companies at all uh, we're always looking at opportunities uh, but so far, we, we haven't pulled the trigger on anything that we felt it fits in very well with what we have here. Uh, but yeah, if you're out there and you have an interesting idea, please definitely talk to us. Who, who should they call? Email me, Cheyenne, at just .com. <laughs> They're going to get flooded. <laughs> as, as a co-founder of the company, is potentially going public one of your long-term goals or no? We want to build a global company that's a market leader in every single country that we can find uh, and become a household name and uh, be here for decades. Uh, so whatever serves that objective the best financially, whether it's being public or staying private, we're going to basically approach that objective and find the tools to get there. So I don't know if at some point going public is going to be the way to sustain that or just staying private and doing what we do, but that's the objective that we're going for. So a good underwriter deal. <laughs>